in today's class we'll be discussing about uh, two topics one is the crystal oscillator and other topic is the frequency stability of oscillators so first we'll be discussing about crystal oscillators so the first question why do we go for crystal oscillators the reason is that we've seen about two types of oscillators the first one is the lc oscillator and the second one is the rc oscillator so we are constructing oscillator by using r l and c components the problem is that these three components resistors capacitors and inductors they don't remain stable at all operating frequencies at all operating voltages so it does not remain constant for the power supply variations it changes with respect to temperature and we connect different loads also the operating frequency of the oscillator changes so due to these drawbacks we will not be using lc and rc oscillators where we require frequency stability therefore a good solution what we have is we will be using a oscillator called as crystal oscillator so we will be using crystal oscillator so that we will be able to better we will be able to get better frequency stability in our oscillator circuits so this diagram uh, this picture is a uh, crystal oscillator ic okay you could have uh, seen this uh, picture in many boards okay most of electronic boards are considered to using these type of oscillators okay and this is also an example of a crystal oscillator used in a microprocessor so this part is a crystal oscillator so in all the circuits most of the circuits of electro uh, most electronic circuits will be using crystal os oscillators so these crystal oscillators are considered to using a main con concept called as piezoelectric effect okay i'll tell what a piezoelectric effect is so assume that this is a crystal okay this is a crystal this is a structure of a crystal oscillator so there are two effects the first one is called as piezoelectric effect and the next one is called as inverse piezoelectric effect so first i'll be telling what is piezoelectric effect piezoelectric effect in this piezoelectric effect what we'll do is that we'll be providing mechanical stress on both the ends of the oscillator of the crystal so when i provide mechanical stress you'll be able to get electrical vibrations electrical signals out of this crystal oscillator so when i provide a mechanical stress okay you'll be able to get a potential difference across the crystal oscillator so that is called as piezoelectric effect okay the next one is called as inverse piezoelectric effect in this effect what they'll do is that they'll inverse the energy given to the crystal oscillator so in this particular inverse piezoelectric effect they'll be applying potential difference and the output that is you output you'll be getting mechanical vibrations out of the crystal oscillator so this is the inverse piezoelectric effect so in our crystal oscillators that we're going to construct now in our crystal oscillators we'll be using the inverse piezoelectric effect okay we'll be using inverse piezoelectric effect that will will be applying an ac signal to the crystal oscillator and it will be able to provide mechanical vibrations and from from those mechanical vibrations will be able to up will be able to obtain a thing called as resonant frequency so it is vibrating at a particular frequency and that frequency is called as resonant frequency of the crystal oscillator so from this resonant frequency we can construct an oscillator and if you want if you want to produce or if you want to get a crystal oscillator if you want to have a crystal oscillator uh, you can produce a crystal oscillator by using three main elements so these elements so the first elements called as rochelle salt quartz and tourmaline so these three elements by nature itself they have this piezoelectric effect so these are called as piezoelectric crystals so the elements rochelle salt quartz and tourmaline uh, tourmaline naturally exhibit this piezoelectric effect so therefore they can be used as crystal oscillators in oscillator circuits and out of these three types of uh, elements the quartz element is the most widely used element because it is easily available and it's very very inexpensive so this is um, crystal construction 
so we are taking an example of quartz crystal because it is more easily available and is very in inexpensive most of our electronic circuits are built using this quartz crystal okay so this is a structure of quartz crystal and um, i told you that when you are giving an electrical signal that is when you apply ac voltage you will be able to obtain mechanical vibrations and those vibrations will produce a resonant frequency so this resonant frequency everything depends on how you cut the crystal how you manufacture the crystals so there are two types of cut that are normally used the first one is called as x cut and other one is called as y cut so using these two types of uh, processes you can cut the crystal and get a structure and from the structure you'll be able to get the frequency of oscillation and if you want to enhance upon the frequency of oscillation you can go for a further step called as polishing so when you polish the crystal you be you'll be able to diff, you'll be able to get a different frequency of oscillation and uh, this crystal is not used directly what they'll do is that if you want this crystal crystal to work they'll be mounting this crystal inside two metallic plates okay and you'll be providing the ac voltage across these metallic plates so that is the equivalent structure equivalent circuit of a crystal oscillator a crystal okay so this one is the equivalent diagram of a crystal so this is the crystal section this is the crystal section and these two are the metallic plates so a crystal is housed between two metallic plates and uh, at the end of the metallic plates you'll be up to, you'll be providing the ac signal so i told you this already so we'll be using a crystal oscillator we'll be using a crystal oscillator with inverse piezoelectric effect so you'll be applying a ac voltage so as you apply a ac voltage the crystal will start to vibrate these vibrations will be having a certain frequency of resonance so that frequency of resonance is what we want for the oscillator okay so when you want to analyze the crystal oscillator and if you want to find out what is the frequency of oscillation for this crystal you have to find out how it is behaving so an equivalent circuit diagram for the crystal is drawn over here so this is the equivalent representation for the crystal oscillator it is represented by two branches okay so this is one branch and this is the second branch in one branch you'll be having a resistor inductor and capacitor in series so these elements are called as series elements so this is called as rs this is called as ls and this is called as cs okay so series resistance series inductance and series capacitance so this is how you will be have having the all all the values of rs ls and cs okay in the next branch you will be having a capacitor that is a parallel capacitor so all of these elements are nothing but the equivalent circuit representation of a crystal a quartz crystal so because you've got these uh, so because you've got these two arms okay uh, this is the main property in the straw quartz crystal oscillator that is a crystal oscillator the thing is that you will be able to obtain two frequency of oscillations using a crystal oscillator you will be able to obtain two frequency of oscillations depending on your choice okay depending on how you use this crystal you will be able to obtain two frequency of oscillations so you've got two different frequencies okay so the first frequency is called as series frequency and the other one is called as a parallel frequency so if you want me to tell very clearly you can tell that if you connect this crystal in series with the output line then you will be able to get a series resonant frequency and if you connect this crystal in parallel with the output line of your amplifier you will be able to get the parallel resonant frequency so it all depends on how you connect the oscillator in your circuit i'll be showing you an example of how it is connected okay so the main point over here to note is that you can make the crystal to work in two different frequencies the first one is a series resonant frequency and the next one is a parallel resonant frequency so in this series resonant frequency how you get the series resonant frequency is that you have to make the value of the reactance cs equal to the value of the inductance ls that is one thing okay so you have to make sure that these two values ls and cs are equal to each other 
so if you do that then you will be able to get the serious resonant frequency so in that point of time you will be getting the resonant frequency formula as 1 by 2 pi root of LSCS you already know what is the formula of a LC circuit it is given as 1 by 2 pi root of LC so because we've got only two elements over here LS and CS so we can write the frequency of oscillation of a crystal oscillator in serious resonance as 1 by 2 pi root of LSCS the next one is the parallel resonant frequency okay so here what we try to do is that we try to make one branch equal to the next branch so the elements of R, L and C all these elements reactance value should be equal to the reactance value of this parallel capacitance CP so if you do like this then you will be able to get a parallel resonant frequency so the parallel resonant frequency formula is given as 1 by 2 pi root of LS CPCS divided by CP plus CS so you can see that CP is a parallel capacitance CS is a series capacitance over here and LS is a series inductance so as I already told you that you've got about two different frequency of operations okay so you can very well see that this is a free, uh, series frequency range and this is a parallel frequency range okay so these two frequency res uh, responses are very nearby and it all depends on how you match the value of your inductance and capacitances so this is the example of uh, what I was telling you about this is the first circuit A is about series resonance so you can see that this is a common emitter amplifier okay I've got an amplifier section and you apply a DC voltage so at the output end you use a crystal oscillator okay so this crystal oscillator is in series with the output end so this is called as a series resonance circuit over here this is a uh, figure B okay this is also a common emitter amplifier but this section if you can look at the feedback network it is nothing but a call pulse oscillator so you've got two capacitances whereas the inductance is replaced by a crystal so this is a call pits crystal oscillator okay and this crystal is in parallel with the two feedback elements c1 and c2 so this circuit is in parallel resonance so we were uh, discussed about crystal oscillators okay so next we'll be discussing about uh, frequency stability of oscillators okay so as I already told you that because of using resistor capacitance inductors in your feedback network the frequency of oscillator does not remain stable at all operating ranges it tends to change due to many parameters so we'll be discussing what are the parameters which are affecting the change in the frequency of the oscillators so the factors that affect the change in this frequency the first point is the variation in temperature okay so you construct devices using active elements that is transistors FETs JFET MOSFET the resistors capacitors inductors what happens is that if the temperature the outside temperature changes then it reflects upon the activity of the element okay so as the temperature changes the property of the element changes therefore it affects the frequency stability of the oscillator next one is power supply in oscillators mainly the power supply plays a major role because that is the first thing that triggers noise in the active element so if the power supply voltage changes due to some parameter of if one voluntarily changes the voltage then it automatically reflects upon the noise in the active device so if the noise changes then automatically feedback changes that in turn changes the frequency of oscillation of the entire circuit that is why the voltage the power supply voltage has to be fixed constant when we are working with oscillator circuits the next one is change it change in output load so when we connect a load device to an oscillator normally what we do is that we require oscillators so that those oscillators will trigger some of the circuits or they, these signals are given to some of the circuits for some particular operation okay so when we connect load when we connect the load to the oscillator device that load will reflect upon the oscillator and therefore the frequency of oscillation of the device changes the next one is the operating point so this is based on the active device 
normally we want the active device to work in the linear region and if we change the temperature or the load then the q point of the active device will change the q point changes in the amplifier then it automatically means that the amplifier gain is going to change if the amplifier gain changes then the oscillator factor that is a beta is equal to 1 if a changes then the oscillator value also will change the last value is the value of q so when we are using reactants that is inductance and capacitance the reactants of the elements are given by a parameter called as q that is the quality factor the quality factor of a parameter has to be very very high which means that it is very very stable if the quality factor of the reactive elements is less it means that the stability is less so we have to use elements reactive elements in which the quality factor q value is very high so the frequency stability can be expressed as d theta by d omega d theta is a phase shift introduced for a small frequency change in the normal frequency fr so when a small frequency change is there then it reflects upon the signal with a phase shift okay so the smaller the frequency change the larger will be the phase shift if that happens it means that the oscillator circuit is stable even if frequency changes by a very large extent and if there is no phase change it means that the circuit is unstable so the more value of s omega the larger the value of s omega the larger is the frequency stability the smaller the value of s omega means that lower is the frequency stability of our circuit so we've discussed till now what is crystal oscillators and the frequency stability of oscillators thank you